Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want to interrupt, but just want to say when I, I'm going to make sure I'm clear so no one misunderstands me. When I said, um, he, when he said, uh, I was raised Protestant and I said, that means nothing. Yeah. What I, what I am not saying there is that there aren't solid Protestant churches worldwide. There are of good course, churches yeah. everywhere all over this planet solid 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 well, and churches you regretfully say that means nothing yes that's not a celebration for you that's my point means. that's my point is that we live in a time 21st century evangelic in evangelism in the west protestantism in the west is in a horrible state and by the way in case you think anything special about that so, so is mormonism <laughs> yeah. and, so, and yep. so is catholicism i mean you can name it across the board because of the western mindset regarding truth yeah today mm-hmm. truth today and so when you say to me well i was raised protestant that means nothing to me tell me what that means what kind of training did you have what kind of protestant training did you have because if you were to say to me um i was trained in protestantism in dr white's church growing up i would say oh, that means something because mm. i know what kind of doctrinal training you got yeah. and even part right. of a larger historical context what do we mean when we say protestantism yep. what are we protesting yeah. And where does that come from? Right. There's a historical meaning that goes all the way back to the Reformation, right. which the same doctrines that came out of that time period um, actually conflict with the views that you hold about yes. man's will yes. and God's predestining power. That's right. That's what the Reformers held to, by the way, yeah. was predestination. And, and Augustine and the early church, second century church, and of course the New Testament itself. I got to just say this quickly. Well, if, oh, if you're using that as a hor- historical context. You're not using it to um, like flash your uh yeah. reform knowledge and my how much smarter muscles. you are yeah. than than your opponent that's mm-hmm. not what it was that's not um there's no comment being made on the age of the person nope. who engaged in this dialogue no nope. no that's Nothing not what's all. being said nope. when 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 you guys asked him like what who do you have on your bookshelf you were asking him like how what you were you're were gauging the the completeness of his knowledge on the That's subject right. not you weren't making a comment on his age or nope. no no i'm so glad you brought that up anything. now that's that's critical i want to just say uh, officially it's very important i'm so i'm so glad you brought that up because when i brought up the point about what book is on your shelf what what i meant by that is when you say the bible cannot be demonstrated from scripture you just cannot it cannot be done there are 2000 years of christian exegesis mm-hmm. of the text of scripture and defending mm-hmm. the christian faith that is, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say this in, in the classical sense, that is asinine. That is asinine to make, make that kind of suggestion that for 2,000 years in history that no one's been able to defend this from Scripture, it shows me something that you have not taken the time to try to right. even read on this. Right. Because I'm telling you, there are descriptions, discussions, exegesis on this subject that are so deep and so far, you can't get three pages into it without your head blowing right. up <laughs> with the amount of Scripture and the logical argumentation and the consistent biblical exegesis and historical references. It, can, it is just insane. So when someone says, well, it can't be shown it can't be done that's why we're still having the debate that's why i said what do you even have on your shelf to demonstrate that you've even given this a shot because i can tell you right now on my shelf are hundreds if not thousands of pages of mormon sources i'm talking about historic mormon sources from your own sources and library where i've taken the time as a christian to understand your worldview and to read these texts and to understand this i've sacrificed time from my my family my work my hobbies my joys to make sure that i invest in understanding your perspective so that i might properly represent you and my point there was to demonstrate that you don't seem to have done that for us mm. right and that's that was the point well also i was just thinking one uh the methodist church came about th- about the same time period as mormonism they came out of that same kind of nonsense going up there around in new york you know so that's where we get a lot of our denominations you know from that same revival mm-hmm. if you will mm-hmm. um so there's that uh but um I, again that's just evidence from him just it's more subjective evidence for the, referring to well, they were smoking pot and having sex. Don't tell me that the kids in the Mormon church aren't doing that. Well, I... I, I, I don't buy it. I didn't... Well, right. let me just say, I moved to Gilbert, Arizona when I was 18 years old. I was still in high school. I was living on my own. And um, at Gilbert High School, I mean, 
tons yeah. of Mormons at Gilbert oh, yeah. High School. I befriended many of these. I drove people home from school. Right. And I'll tell you right now, the problem is the same. Exactly. Yeah. In the Mormon church. I can promise you that. Absolutely promise you that. Um, but but that's not the main source of my argumentation. Right, the point exactly. there is to say, let's get down to brass tacks and let's get to what the Bible says. Let's get to the theological discussion, what actually matters. Um, these, these claims aren't ultimately helpful. Say, actually, the Trinity has been something that has been on my mind probably since fifth grade, starting at Harvest Bible Church in okay. Cypress, Texas. This has been something discussed a lot. I've read a lot about the Trinity. Um, then why have you misdefined it yes, consistently? That's a I don't I think have I have. Heard. Okay, you said that there's one being who's three beings. No one. I didn't say that. You, you did. did on the video. You did. We played it. We played yeah. it more than once. Did I or did Ian say it? No. Oh, you guys talk over you, each other. How, yeah. How's anybody? Because I feel it? like uh, when I look back at my video, my episode with, with about the Trinity, um, I think it represented very well. It's three persons and one God, correct? Uh, do you know what the difference between person and, and being or nature is? Um, well, I know that was that not brought up, right? Would you, would you admit I, you didn't? All right, here we go. So that was, that was the intro to the discussion, so let's do it. Um, what Mormons believe about the Trinity, Kwaku says this was published about a year ago, December 5th, actually, 2017 uh, is when it was published. So let's go ahead and run through this together and do it as cool. quickly as possible. Hey, three Mormons! Why do you talk about the Trinity, huh? Huh? Oh, because you can't. Because your, your church is false. Joseph con man. LD dollar sign church. Sinatra.com. So, the Trinity and the Godhead. This is a big topic a lot of people have asked us to address. I think we need to really talk about the Trinity because the Blade Trinity <laughs> is one of the best trilogies of all time. Although I wanted to say that is horrible. Because hmm. um, that movie, <laughs> only Blade 1, was good. You think so? Oh, uh, no, two, no, no, I'm sorry. I totally disagree. Three Mormons are absolutely wrong. First on, one's uh, definitely the best. So you can't, you can't, you can't make, do one better than the first one. You're, you disagreeing, Daniel? Yes? Okay, all right. Just, I mean, that's, I <laughs> first mean. First one's definitely the best. You gotta admit that. Yeah, okay. Well, I think Pirates of the Caribbean is a great trilogy. There's no, more I know, than three. I know, I know the three. No, they're not. There's more. Four and five. You said four, five was good. Oh, are you gonna come no, back? No, 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 five was good. Four was, I enjoyed it, but I recognized that it was bad. But the first three, are just synergy, just synergy. Synergy. Okay. We're gonna talk about real sagas. Synergy. New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. I bet you don't even know those are. You don't even know those are. Uh, I haven't seen Star Trek. Okay. Um, ah! This is something you mentioned a couple days ago. You said the Trinity and Godhead at face level. You know, they seem like the same thing. You just yeah. look at them, you're like, well, oh, what, what's different from Mormons and other churches? Yeah, yeah. You, you got God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. You got God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. So why are they different? Why is there such a discussion online about why they're different? Yeah, well, we're going to talk about that today. A lot of times, people confuse the Trinity with modalism. Mm. And so that's important to make a distinction. Growing up a lot... This was good. I was really Thank glad that he that. actually... Very true. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we don't usually do that, so... Very glad that you actually brought this in and you got this kind of right here. Uh, modalism is the doctrine that the persons of the Trinity represent only three modes or aspects of the divine revelation, not distinct and coexisting persons in the divine nature, quoting from Google.com. Uh, so I'm glad you uh, made this distinction, but this, this is where it falls off. Sometimes I heard this um, before I was LDS. You know, God is kind of like, you know, if you have a cup of water, that's a liquid. But if you freeze it, it's ice. And then if you leave it out forever in the hot sun, it evaporates turns into gas. Just so you know, that's a lot modalism. Of that. <laughs> so uh, encourage that's what he was told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Encourage everyone uh, out there who's listening to this right now or watching this right now. Um, very, very important that you never, ever, ever use that example because it is undeniably false and not biblical. And yes, modalism uh, is all over that. So uh, Christian out there, if you've heard that and you just sort of picked it up as a child, someone told you that and you've just been passing that around, please never use that. It is absolutely unbiblical and false. And just one thing about that too, remember Bob Inc. and Reformed Dogmatics, he makes the very astute observation that anytime you compare the triune God to anything at all, your comparison automatically Fall falls flat on its face. So mm -hmm. we should just stop doing that. We should yeah. stop comparing uh, the Trinity to, to yes. any creaturely thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just right. just give what the Bible says. That's right. all you need. It falls flatter than a flat earth. That's well, fine. and it, it, does, it creates this sort of environment where you are attempting to understand something fully in a physical human way when a part of it is that God is not a man. <laughs> right. Um, so there are things about him that we will not 
comprehend in the way that we comprehend things that are here mm-hmm. on this earth. So when right. you do propagate bad examples of modalism, um, it does it. Well, what it does is it creates groups of people, my generation that, uh, completely misunderstand what the Trinity is. Yes. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't make the comparisons. Just give what God says about himself. 